Kagoshima Prefecture of Japan lies the Sakurajima Volcano. What was once its own island is now actually a peninsula thanks to lava flows back in 1914. The volcano is made up of three peaks, the northern, central, and southern. It is the southern peak that is currently active. The Sakurajima Volcano is Japan's most active volcano, with thousands of small eruptions taking place every year since activity became more prominent in 1955. On Tuesday, March 3rd of 2015, cameras were rolling in anticipation of some action. During this time, there were warnings sent out that the volcano was on high alert, so people flocked to the scene with the hopes of capturing something spectacular on film. As soon as the video starts, the first eruption occurs, sending out a powerful shockwave that can be heard on camera. A little while later, a second, more detailed and colorful eruption occurs. Since this video came out, the volcano has continued to have eruptions. In 2016, researchers from Bristol University in Iceland, as always, I apologize to our Icelandic viewers for my butchering of the pronunciation, but Eyjafjallajökull is an ice cap that covers the caldera of a volcano. The ice cap is rather large, covering an area of about 40 square miles, or 100 kilometers. Underneath lies a stratovolcano with a crater roughly two and a half miles or three to four kilometers in diameter. This volcano erupted most recently in 2010, and although it was relatively small compared to other eruptions, it was enough to shut down air traffic on a level not seen in decades. Footage captured during this event shows incredible close-up shots of the volcano erupting, spewing out powerful bursts of lava and ash.
This eruption lasted from March 20th to June 23rd, 2010. But the worst was between April 14th and 20th when the airspace shutdown occurred. The reason for this shutdown was because of the volcanic ash cloud that had spread out over many European countries. The ash cloud was so large that, in many places close to the volcano, daylight was entirely blocked out. The closure of air travel caused millions of people to become stranded all over the world as their flights were suddenly cancelled. The International Air Transport Association estimated that this disruption would end up costing about $200 million per day. In the end, the total loss was around $1.7 billion. This just goes to show the immense power that even what was considered a small eruption can have. Bien, el instrumento ya finalizado la tarea de determinación. Esto es el extracto seco total del Fernebranca. El instrumento nos indica la cantidad que justamente coincide con la especificación tan estricta del producto. Está aprobado. Estamos de regreso en Argentina. Aquí todos los días enfrentan el desafío de abastecer de Fernet Branca a todo un continente, conservando el secreto de su fórmula original. Luego de varios meses, el Fernet recién nacido viaja por tuberías hasta las bodegas subterráneas. ¿Me acompaña, Ricardo? Bueno. Bueno, ¿ves? Estas son las tuberías sí. por donde mandamos el Fernet, en este caso, el ya terminado, para ser embotellado. Uh -huh. Estamos a 8 metros de profundidad. En estas cubas y toneles hechos de madera de roble de eslabonia, el sabor, aroma y buque de esta bebida alcanza su grado óptimo. Las cubas siempre verticales y los toneles de forma horizontal. Así es, pero estos son dos toneles que fueron enviados especialmente desde Italia. Tienen más de 100 años de vida porque ya estaban trabajando allá cuando Fratelli Branca Destilerías comenzó su actividad en la Argentina. A través de los poros de la madera se produce la microoxigenación, o sea, el ingreso de pequeñas cantidades de oxígeno en forma constante. A lo largo de 25 años, Ricardo ha visto varias generaciones de la bebida madurar en estas bodegas. Ricardo, han pasado ya 12 meses en que el Fernet ha estado estacionado aquí. ¿Puedo ya probarlo? Bueno, pero antes... Déjame explicarte qué es lo que está pasando aquí. Esto que nosotros llamamos nuestras cubas madres están albergando casi un millón de litros de Fernet Branca, que ya está listo y recibiendo diariamente nuevas cantidades que se mezclan con estas que están acá y se van homogeneizando. Con esto procuramos evitar cualquier eventual diferencia de sabor que pudiera haber dado que son todos componentes muy naturales. El Fernet Branca va traspasando de una cuba a otra por un sistema de vasos comunicantes. Mientras que la última cuba madre se está enviando Fernet Branca a la línea de embotellamiento, en la primera está ingresando producto que viene de la maduración. Entonces, antes de ser embotellado, ¿puedo probarlo yo de aquí? Bueno, vamos a hacer una nueva excepción y vas a pasar a formar parte de nuestro círculo más íntimo de probadores de Fernet de esta cuba madre. Gracias. Está amargo. Pica. Siento como que me sale fuego por la nariz. Toda la personalidad de Fernet Branca. Y 
disfruten a su salud. Muy bien. Gracias. 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 Seguimos brindando. Todo por una buena fórmula. Por una buena noche. Y una buena noche, sí. <risa> <risa> Continuamos en Argentina, donde elaboran Fernet Branca, una bebida que fue creada hace casi 165 años, pero que se mantiene vigente y actual como el primer día. Luego de la homogenización en las cubas madres, la bebida viaja al sector de embotellado. Aunque muchas de las etapas de producción mantienen sus principios artesanales, Fratelli Branca Destilerías se dedica continuamente a incorporar tecnología de vanguardia en sus plantas. La alta tecnología aplicada al sector de embotellado hace que solo cuatro personas controlen todo el proceso. Para satisfacer una demanda que crece constantemente, hoy cuentan con un equipamiento de embotellamiento de avanzada, con una capacidad de 18 mil botellas por hora. Antes que las botellas sean rellenadas, se enjuagan con el mismo fernet y a una presión suficiente para erradicar dentro de ellas todo tipo de partículas indeseadas. Acto seguido, las botellas se llenan a una velocidad de 300 litros por minuto y se colocan las tapas. Finalmente, se aplica la etiqueta que contiene el logo tradicional. Este diseño se adopta en el siglo XIX y hasta la actualidad sigue vigente. que se les coloca la etiqueta autoadhesiva, las botellas llegan hasta este sector de empaquetado. La novedad de esta máquina es que arma las cajas alrededor de las botellas a una velocidad de 60 cajas por minuto. En el sector de embotellado se realiza el fraccionado de Fernet Branca en sus distintas presentaciones. Un coordinado sistema de logística y distribución facilita la entrega de la bebida en menos de 24 horas a ciudades argentinas o un plazo máximo de 72 horas al resto de Latinoamérica. Una nueva partida de Fernet Branca marcha rumbo al encuentro con sus consumidores y para mí también llegó el momento de averiguar cómo disfrutarlo. ¿Qué les parece si ahora que estemos más relajaditos me revelan la fórmula del Fernet? Tenemos una larga noche por delante. Ya veremos. Yo creo que con varias combinaciones que hacen. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo están bien? Esta receta es sencilla, ¿sí? Son dos piedritas de hielo. Muy bien. Está Fernet, ¿verdad? Tenemos dos onzas de Fernet. El Fernet. Y completamos con bebida cola. Que lo disfruten, chicos. Bueno, Gracias. Buena mañana, Gracias. Gracias. Bueno, pues, Gracias. salud. 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 Y bienvenidos. Gracias. Gracias. ¿Y qué tal? ¿Me sigue sabiendo amargo? El pan de blanca es amargo. <risa> Por supuesto. No siento la manzanilla definitivamente, <risa> Aurea. <risa> ¿Sabes por qué? ¿Por qué? Por el perfecto equilibrio que tienen todas las hierbas allá adentro. Por eso no distingues a ninguna de no, las hierbas. No puedo. Pero bueno, yo quiero saber la fórmula del Fernet, en realidad. Desde hoy que estamos con esto. Adelante, ¿eh? sí, adelante, tú toma. Además de ser una bebida muy popular en Argentina e Italia, el Fernet Branca también es muy solicitado en otros países, como Estados Unidos y Alemania. ¿Qué te parece un licor de crema de whisky africano? Me 
parece bien. una buena combinación. Muy bueno. Unas tres o cuatro piedras de hielo en una coctelera con dos partes de branca o dos onzas, como quieran. Vamos a terminar con este licor de crema de whisky. Vamos a ponerle un dash de licor estrega. A ver cómo queda. Vamos a, a probar. Así es. Hasta no probar. Hay que probar. Sí. A ver. Ah, mire. ¿Qué tal? De crema. Buen aspecto, ¿eh? Sí. Buen aspecto. Buen cuerpo. Buena sí. caída. Brillante. Que la disfruten a su salud. Muy bien. Gracias. 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 Seguimos brindando. Todo por una buena fórmula. Por una buena noche. Y una buena noche, sí. <risa> salud. Muy bien. Si es que finalmente voy a descubrir la fórmula original, la noche va a ser mucho más larga de lo que pensaba. Pero yo no me quejo.
Oh, what are men compared to rocks and mountains? Or carriages that work. Where exactly are we? I think we're quite close to Pemberley. Mr. Darcy's home. That's the fellow. Very well stocked lake. I have a hankering to see it. Oh, no, let's not. Oh, he's so... I'd rather not. He's so... He's so... So what? He's so rich. <laughs> By heavens, Lizzie, what a snob you are. Objecting to poor Mr Darcy because of his wealth. The poor man can't help it. He won't be there anyway. These great men are never at home. Handsome face. Lizzie, is it a true likeness? Does the young lady know Mr. Darcy? Only a little. Do you not think him a handsome man, miss? Yes. Yes, I dare say he is. This is his sister, Miss Georgiana.
Miss Elizabeth. I thought you were in London. No. No, I'm not. No. no I we would not have come early. Some you're... business with my steward. Yeah. I'm in Devonshire with my aunt and uncle. And are you having a pleasant trip? Very pleasant. Tomorrow we go to Matlock. Tomorrow? Are you staying at Lambton? Yes, at the Rose and Crown. Yes. I'm so sorry to intrude. They said that the house was open for visitors. I had, I had no idea. May I see you back to the village? No. I'm very fond of walking. Yes. Yes, I know. Goodbye, Mr. Darcy. One volcano I'm sure all of us have heard of before is Krakatoa. The volcano has been featured in many stories and films over the last several decades. This caldera lies in the Sunda Strait between the islands of Java and Sumatra and is part of a volcanic island group. Its most infamous eruption occurred in 1883 and took the lives of tens of thousands of people. To give you an idea of the scale of that eruption, it was heard as far as 3,000 miles, or 4,800 kilometers away. And experts have said that anyone within a 10-mile or 16-kilometer radius would have gone deaf. The global temperatures dropped for at least five years, and weather patterns in areas like California were severely impacted. Because of all this, and much more, the 1883 eruptions are among the most violent volcanic events in all of recorded history. Since then, small and periodic eruptions have continued, and as you're about to see, can be quite incredible. This video, shot in 2018, captures many moments of the volcano erupting at night, coating the entire mountain in lava. The eruptions were all very similar, but had their own unique characteristics. What is perhaps the craziest thing about this video is that it was shot just two months before a much larger eruption occurred. This eruption caused part of the volcano to collapse, triggering a tsunami that would later be known as the 2018 Sunda Strait Tsunami. This tsunami occurred around 9.30 at night. Because of a lack of early warning and the fact that it occurred at night, hundreds lost their lives. Thousands of homes and even ships were destroyed as well in the coastal regions of Banten and Lampung. This event was the deadliest volcanic tsunami in Indonesian history since, you guessed it, 
1883 eruption. The coast of Sicily in Italy lies the active stratovolcano known as Mount Etna. Mount Etna is one of the most active volcanoes found anywhere on Earth. In 2021 alone, this volcano erupted so much that it grew in height by about 100 feet or 30 meters. This volcano holds many other accolades as well. It is one of the tallest active volcanoes in Europe and is the tallest peak in Italy south of the Alps. It is also the largest active volcano in Italy by far. Because of how active the volcano is, it's become a popular destination for people wanting to capture Etna's eruptions on film or just see them for themselves. This video, posted on March 30th, 2021, shows one of those eruptions in all of its glory. In the video, we see not only the eruption, but the molten lava flow that followed it. Since this volcano is so active, locals know not to set up homes anywhere near it. Even though images from the city of Catalina show the volcano in the background, the truth is the volcano is about 15 miles or 23 kilometers away. Even images from Google Earth show how different cities and towns are built around the volcano, with residents making sure to keep their... Every year on Easter... Legend has it that a cotton-tailed critter goes from home to home delivering colorful eggs, yummy sweets, and fun toys for children. If the critter is feeling mischievous, it will hide the colorful eggs, making sure only the most clever of children can find them. For the first legendary rabbit on this list, we have the Easter Bunny. For its association with spring and Easter, the Easter Bunny has become a famous symbol throughout the world for the Christian holiday. But has it always been like that? Let's explore the origins of the famous bunny. It's thought that the Easter Bunny originates from Anglo-Saxon pagan traditions. Celebrations for the season of spring were extremely common all over Europe back in the day, and spring represented rebirth and growth which meant celebrations included eggs and rabbits as symbols of the season. Some traditions had an egg-laying Easter hare that would decide if a child had been well-behaved before the spring season. If they were, the Easter hare would then bring the children its colored eggs in a basket. Another idea is that the rabbit was the sacred animal of the pagan goddess of spring, Estra, who is one of the possible sources that we get the namesake of Easter from. As Christianity absorbed and adapted the pagan traditions, the story of the Easter Hare changed into the Osterhaz and eventually made its way to Pennsylvania from German immigrants in the 1700s. Hearing from their parents about the tales of the great gifts the Osterhaz brought, children would build nests for the rabbits to leave its goodies. From there, the custom exploded over the years into the cute and popular Easter Bunny. In the 19th century, the chocolate industry got involved and began to make chocolate in the shape of eggs and rabbits, resulting in the change of real eggs for chocolate eggs and even more influence for the Easter Bunny. Number 2. The Jackalope The jackalope is a creature from North American folklore described as a rabbit with antelope horns. The jackalope is said to get its origins from Douglas Herrick, a hunter with taxidermy skills. In the 1930s, he put antlers on a rabbit, and from there the legend grew out of proportion. 
Some legends claim they're herbivores with antlers that are able to pierce through flesh. Other legends say jackalopes are able to mimic voices and are fond of singing with campers. And even more legends claim you can calm an angry jackalope by giving it whiskey. While the origins of jackalopes make them sound like tall tales, the idea of a rabbit with horns isn't something new. Rabbits with horns have appeared all over European folklore, as well as in Central American mythology. A possible explanation for this is a disease specific to rabbits and hares that make them grow tumors on their heads and bodies that look like horns. Seeing a rabbit with this disease, it wouldn't be hard for people to believe that a species of rabbit exists with horns. Perhaps it was sightings and stories of these diseased creatures that influenced the legend of horned rabbits, as well as Herrick's creation of the jackalope. Number 3. The Moon Rabbit Much of Western civilization is familiar with the man in the moon, but in the East, people are more familiar with the rabbit in the moon. In fact, the moon rabbit is an important figure in many Asian folktales. Usually, the rabbit is associated with a moon goddess or is in charge of pounding ingredients for the elixir of immortality. The most famous story of the moon rabbit comes from a Buddhist tale. In the story, an otter, a monkey, a jackal, and a rabbit are practicing charity on the night of a full moon. The animals find an old man who is starving and begs them for food. The monkey brings the old man some fruits, while the otter brings some fish, and the jackal brings a lizard. But the rabbit is only able to bring grass, something that the old man cannot eat. So after the old man makes a fire for the other ingredients, the rabbit offers itself to the old man and jumps into the fire. A moment later, the rabbit opens its eyes, realizing that it hadn't died. Impressed and moved by the rabbit's charity, the old man reveals himself to the animals as a deity. The deity then drew the shape of the rabbit into the moon, so all can know of the rabbit's charity. The moon rabbit also appears in Aztec legends, sharing a similar story to the Buddhist tale. In Native American legend, the Cree have their own story about a moon rabbit wishing to fly to the moon. Only the crane agrees to take the rabbit, but as they fly towards the moon, the crane's legs are stretched because the rabbit is heavy. Once they reach the moon, the rabbit touches the crane's head with a bloody paw, thus being the reason the crane has long legs and red marks on top of their heads. Number 4. The Tortoise and the Hare As one of the most famous stories in the world, the hare from this story easily fits the bill as a legendary rabbit, even though rabbits and hares are two different animals. But I mean, hey, a hare looks like a rabbit to me, so I'm going to count it. Anyways, the story is from Aesop's Fables and tells the tale of how a hare is making fun of a tortoise because of its slowness. The tortoise then challenges the hare to a race, making the hare laugh in glee. So the two have their race, and right before the hare is about to win, he decides that he has plenty of time to take a nap. When the hare wakes, he realizes that he has overslept and that the tortoise had won. Like most of Aesop's fables, the story of the tortoise and the hare is a lesson teaching people not to be overconfident. Number 5. The White Hare of Inaba The White Hare of Inaba is involved in a famous story from Japanese mythology. The story begins with the hare trying to reach the mainland from his island. He isn't able to swim the entire way, so he decides to trick some crocodiles into helping him. The hare tricks the crocodiles into lining up from head to tail, creating a bridge to the mainland. The hare then hops along the backs of the crocodiles, but right before he reaches the mainland, he insults the crocodiles for falling for his trick. This angers the final crocodile, causing it to bite off the hare's fur. Lying on the beach in agony, a group of 80 princes comes upon the hare. The princes were on a journey to a nearby kingdom to try and win the hand that kingdom's princess. Deciding to play a cruel prank on the hare, the princes told him that if he wanted to regrow his fur, that he should bathe in salt water, then let the winds and sun dry him off. Listening to the princes, the hare did so, resulting in the hare's skin to dry out and crack, which caused the hare even more pain. Laughing at its pain, the princes walked off, leaving the hare to die. But soon after, the youngest and 81st came upon the hare. He was carrying all the prince's luggage and so had fallen behind. 
Seeing the hare in pain, he listened to the hare's story. After the hare was done, the young prince shook his head in disappointment at the hare's trickery, but decided to help him. He told the hare to bathe in a lake and then roll in some foxtail bushes. Doing so, the hare regained its fur and showed the young prince his gratitude. The hare then traveled with the young prince to the princess's castle. There the hare told the princess of the young prince's kindness and the cruelty of his eighty older brothers. Hearing the story, the princess chose the youngest to be her husband, while banishing the eighty older brothers from her kingdom. Number 6. The Al Mirage The Al Mirage are mythical one-horned rabbits from Arabic legend. They inhabit an island in the Indian Ocean called the Dragon Island and are said to give off a presence that makes all wild beasts flee. Supposedly, they're incredibly nimble and fast, as well as furious carnivores, which explains why wild creatures fear them. Also, their horns have healing properties. Legend has it that Alexander the Great one day happened upon the island during his sailings. He discovered that the people of Dragon Island were being terrorized by a dragon, so he stuffed two oxes with poison and sacrificed them to the beast. Overjoyed with the dragon's death, the people of Dragon Island gifted Alexander the Great an Al Mirage. Number 7. The Skavator and Walpertinger. Skavators and Walpertingers are two rabbit creatures with body parts from other animals, making them very similar to the American jackalope. The Skavator has the body of a hare, but the upper back, wings, and tails of a goose. It originates from Sweden from a man claiming he hunted a flying rabbit on his recent hunting trip. The Wolpertinger is from Germany and is said to have the head of a hare, two large fangs, the antlers of a deer, the body of a squirrel, and the wings and sometimes the feet of a falcon. Supposedly, if a Wolpertinger's saliva touches human skin, a thick tuft of hair will grow where the saliva touched. They are usually shy creatures, but are able to let out a foul smell they feel threatened. Legend has it that if you get gassed by a Wolpertinger's foul smell, it will linger on you for exactly seven years. And there it is. I give you some legendary rabbits and hares from mythology and folklore. Hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe and comment so you can enter our giveaway. Well, until next time on Wild Mythology. That in July of 2015 and captures this volcanic eruption, but it also captures something else, a powerful pyroclastic flow that rushed down the volcano and crashed into the ocean below. For those who don't know, a pyroclastic flow is made up of hot gas, solidified lava chunks, and ash following a volcanic eruption. Because this volcano is so active, it attracts people from all over the world to come and witness it, leading to incredible moments like this being caught on film. I must say though, the journey there is not an easy one. 
Taking a look at Google Earth, we can see that the island doesn't seem to have as much as a dock for boats, let alone any actual buildings or structures. But for the true volcano lovers, this is not enough to keep them away. Volcanoes are one of the most impressive, powerful, and terrifying forces on our planet. History is littered with examples of massive eruptions that wiped out entire civilizations, and perhaps the worst is yet to come. Thankfully, we have many early warning systems to tell if an eruption is imminent, giving people in the area time to get away. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to
gets that style And the pretty dimples And the pretty smile When you start to dance You put him in a trance Shaking it up and down Shake a little here Shake a little there You got the boys going to town Honolulu 